A fast credit revolution is rapidly changing how we shop. Millions of transactions are taking place each month using buy now, pay later services. Everywhere you go and you like something, can I do a lay by? They'll say, oh, you can do the pay or after pay. It works like this. Instead of the customer paying a store directly, they pay using the buy now, pay later service and the customer repays the amount in instalments. Single mother Lucy Cowilla has been a customer of one of the more prominent services ZipPay for four years. In March, she used it to buy this couch. Because I was so much in debt, I couldn't save up to buy the couch and we needed one because the other one was pretty much falling apart. ZipPay is owned by Zipco, a publicly listed company in a sector where competition is fierce. So currently uh, Zip has over 1.3 million active customers across the platform. Yeah, this is a really fast growing space with two major current competitors, that's Afterpay, the big dog, and Zipco, kind of the, the, the fast follower if you like. There are others out there, Split It is another one. Um, there are American players. The Commonwealth Bank uh, has only just recently taken an investment in a Swedish buy now, pay later company. Lucy and her three children live just north of Brisbane. She's unexpectedly in financial stress after leaving a relationship. So I had to move twice, which was very expensive, and I discovered I was pregnant. Yeah, so I couldn't go back to work. The wisdom of the prudent Her main debt is an outstanding car loan for more than $40,000. It's very stressful, highly stressful. Wendy Moore is helping an increasing number of people like Lucy who have large debts and are also struggling to repay much smaller buy now pay later amounts. Because it's like a thousand dollar debt compared to maybe three or four other loans they've got where they've got $25,000 outstanding altogether, the $1,000 debt is not the one that takes priority when you're looking at it, but it exacerbates the whole problem. 7.30 can reveal 253 complaints have been made about buy now, pay later companies to the Australian Financial Complaints Authority. The complaints were about unauthorised transactions, incorrect fees and credit ratings. Buy Now Pay Later encourages people to spend more than they have the capacity for and because they aren't re regulated, they aren't required to assess whether you can afford repayments. Lucy currently owes ZipPay $965. Every month she repays $40, which includes a $6 account fee. But it's a struggle with her other debts. I'm a good customer, I make all my payments, so I think it doesn't really bother them as long as I'm making those payments. Zipco maintains they do identity and credit checks on customers. How are we going? But ZipPay and other buy now, pay later providers are not subject to the National Credit Code, which means responsible lending obligations don't apply. So we're looking at a customer's credit file, their credit score, we're also having a look at banking transactional information. 730 provided Zip co-founder Peter Gray with specific details of Lucy Cowilla's case, including her written consent to discuss it, but he declined to answer specific questions. Yeah, so for privacy reasons it's difficult to sort of comment on the specifics of any individual customer. We would encourage uh, any customer who's experiencing financial hardship to identify themselves to ZIP. And, uh, yeah, who would think that this little bit of jewellery would do so much damage, like, over the years? Gold Coast man Tim Godson used another provider, Surtigy Easy Pay, which is now called HUM, to buy this $5,000 necklace for his partner. Yeah, mate, that's all I was trying to do. Tim had $1,400 outstanding when his contract work fell through. Just dealing with them, that wasn't the only problem at the time in my life. I had, like, you know, just all my other bills and financial responsibilities. He was in substantial debt and claims he told the company he couldn't afford to pay, something the company disputes. His debt was then on to a collection agency. 
I got harassed a lot via phone. Um, I dealt with people which were pretty threatening. Uh, they wouldn't take into like they wouldn't take into consideration what I was going through. Flexi Group owns the service Tim Godson used. Rebecca James believes the company's actions were justified because call logs show Tim didn't mention he was in hardship. Timothy expressed a willingness to repay um, and also indicated on a handful of those occasions that he was working. So I wished at the time that Timothy had put up his hand and said um, that he wasn't working at, at, a, at a point in time. Tim ended up with a bad credit rating for several years. Basically it's almost as, well, you may as well be bankrupt. You can't get a loan, no one will touch you. I'm just going to disappear again. Tim eventually paid a credit repair company more than $1,000 to lodge a complaint with the Credit and Investments Ombudsman, which eventually resulted in the black mark on his record being removed. It's the same as anyone getting a loan. It's At the end of the day, it's still money, that, um, money that's owing and it still can go to a debt collector and the repercussions of not paying it are the same you can still end up with a default. The transfer of outstanding payments to a collections agency um, is only done as an absolute last resort and only occurs in a very small number of occasions. The corporate regulator ASIC says unpaid debt on buy now pay later services sits at $900 million and ASIC now has the power to intervene if it sees consumers being negatively affected. If we end up with some sort of economic shock, the individual consumer cost and frankly the economic impact is something we're just not prepared for. We don't know what that impact will be, but it's likely to exacerbate any downturn. Since publication of that submission... At a recent Senate inquiry last year, Jared Brody called for responsible lending obligations under the National Code to be applied to the fast-growing sector. The Morrison government is still considering its response. They should be required to have um, checks around affordability before providing a loan. There should be assistance that's provided for anyone in financial difficulty. Zipco only supports the national code being applied to services offering customers more than $2,000, which would mean its ZipPay brand is exempt. I think uh, ZIP supports, supports further regulation uh, for the sector as on, on the basis that it was industry specific and this, this would involve uh, verification of income. Definitely it should change, yeah. Because sometimes when you get a ZIP pay, it's too rich, it's, it's too rich a loan to be given and it's something that's not always sustainable. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.